Greta, I have to stop that plane from leaving. What are you going to do? I don't know yet. You get the car. It's hidden in the trees near the entrance. The keys are on the dash. Okay. Keep the engine running. We need to leave as soon as I get the girl. Jack? Yes? Be careful. There's no time to be careful. Not this time. Greta, go! Dannazione! It's too late! It looks like you're too late, Del Nero. What are you doing here? Why aren't you on that plane? I hate traveling. I'm not the kind of guy who crosses the desert on a camel. I prefer the comfort of the big city. Moreover, had I left, I would have missed the chance to deal with you. You made me look ridiculous in the eyes of the organization, and I don't have any intention of letting you get away with it. And what do you want to do? Kill me? I can see it on your face that you've never shot anyone. You're not that kind of guy. You send your men to do your dirty work. You're right. I've never shot anyone. Even though many men and women died because I ordered it. How brave. But you know, there's a first time for everything. It was destiny, Del Nero. It had to be a little past four in the afternoon. I had just lit one of the many cigarettes that fill my days with no clients, when a middle-aged guy comes into my office with two caterpillars for eyebrows and a cigar hanging from his mouth. He introduces himself as Harvey Weber, the owner of Weber Company, a meat house in Larchmont. After ten minutes of pointless chatter about his job, he gives me a photograph. Susan Weber, twenty years old, Harvey's stepdaughter. He tells me all about her carefree lifestyle, her dreams of becoming an actress, and how she hasn't come home in weeks, but how he keeps getting bills for clothes, shoes, and other things that might catch the eye of a 20-year-old girl with a well-heeled old man. Harvey, because of his divorce agreement with his ex-wife, is responsible for supporting the girl until she turns 21. So the kid decides to take advantage of her old man while she can and spend as much as possible until she turns 21. But Harvey Weber isn't one to sit on his hands, and he got his attorneys on the case. They think that if Susan were caught having an affair that her old man wouldn't know of, it could bring the evidence to court and get her cut off. Just one photograph would do it, according to Harvey. I take the job. I'll get him that photograph. The whole thing will cost him 30 bucks a day, plus expenses, paid in advance. Harvey gives me a check for 30 bucks and leaves my office. I cash the check, toss down something that can be called a dinner, and I'm already in Harlem. A few dollars got me a tip that Harvey Weber's kid might be around here, at the Last Heaven Hotel, to be precise. According to the information that I have, a few days ago, some blondie went on a shopping spree here in Harlem. In this neighborhood, if you have money to spend on clothes and jewelry, it's easy to get noticed. I even managed to find out that the girl was seen entering the Last Heaven Hotel. I'd better ask a few questions. Just a pile of junk. I have better things to do than rummage through. This theater was one of the landmarks of the Harlem Renaissance, the movement that, a few years ago, led to the explosion of Afro-American culture in the United States. Rather pointless. It looks like not even the shiny world of show business has managed to escape the grasp of the Great Depression.
hey, you, where do you think you're going? That's the way to the rooms, but I don't think you're one of my guests. I'm looking for a woman. Well, who is it nowadays? Hi, do you own this place? Well, depends on who wants to know. I'm a friend of one of your guests. The last guy who introduced himself as such destroyed a room for a thing about lovers. So pardon me if I'm a little wary of friends of my guests. I'm a private detective. A private detective. I guess someone has gotten himself in trouble. More or less. It's about a girl. A girl, you say? There are a lot of them here. And for a few bucks, they can give you a night that will stay in your memories for a long, long time. She's not a prostitute. Susan Weber. White, medium frame, blonde hair, 20 years, and pretty enough to cause her some troubles. Have you seen her? Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not used to giving out information about my guests to the first person who happens by. People come here to have a place where no one can find them, and not just for a place where to sleep. And I try to help them with that as much as I can. Come on, don't make a fuss. Tell me where I can find Ms. Weber. Sorry, but you won't get anywhere by being pushy. Tell me where I can find the girl. I've already told you that you won't get anywhere in this way. You must have a good imagination to call this hotel Last Heaven. No fantasies or sentimentalities. They're not for me. At least not anymore. Well, this hotel belonged to my brother, Louis Fitzgerald Heaven. There were nine of us, and he was the youngest. And that's why people called him the Last Heaven. When he bought the hotel, he didn't have any doubts about what to call it. At that time, this place was falling apart, but Louis was sure he could turn it into a good hotel, and he made it. How come it's you running it now? My brother can't take care of it anymore. In October 1926, some redneck who missed the good old days of slavery refused to pay his three-day rent for the room. He said that he would have never given money to a Negro. And when my brother threatened to call the police, the guy pulled out a gun and pulled the trigger, shot him in the guts. My brother died almost immediately. Even though he was small, he never let anyone to push him around. And what we all thought of as a quality eventually turned out to be what killed him. And the hotel stayed closed for years, and it was I who reopened it five years later, but without my brother, it wasn't the same hotel anymore. Did the police get the killer? Well, you already know the answer. One day, great men will be able to change how things are, and there won't be any more hatred between blacks and whites. Nowadays, they name streets in New York after these great men, and when that happens, it means they didn't meet with a happy ending. Forget about it. Now, whatever you want. This job probably doesn't pay too much. I'm sure that with a little encouragement, he would tell me more. Ten bucks should be more than enough for some information. These might make you change your mind. Money to buy information? That must be one important girl you're looking for. Enough for someone to hire me. You know, lately, a lot of people like you have come by. They ask questions, look for people. Once, this hotel was considered one of the best in Harlem. Now it's become a shelter for criminals, easy women, and people who are running away from something. All it took was a couple of years of recession to turn New York into a cesspool. I wonder where this city's going to end up. Where it always has. Nowhere. Ah, uh, you're always headed somewhere. Good or bad, you always have a direction. The day that New York will be rotten through and through, that will be the day that the good God himself will come down to crush it. Don't count on that. I know people in this city who would manage to bribe your good God with a couple of well-aimed compliments. Son, I guess you're not a believer. I believe in whiskey and in all those things that I can explain in a day. 
Well, without faith, it's impossible to survive in this city. Everyone needs something to believe in. Probably I just don't have anything worth believing in yet. Anyway, let's end this catechism lesson and tell me where I can find the girl. Hmm, you said her name is Susan Weber? Susan Weber, with two Bs. Hmm, Susan Weber. Oh, you gave me money in exchange for information, but who says that I have any? Dannazione, you must have a list with the names of your guests. As I told you earlier, this hotel is a place where half of the tenants are poor devils trying to get away from something. They usually don't give their real names. A hundred John Smiths, a dozen George Washingtons, even a couple of Charlie Chaplins pass through this hotel. So there is no room under the name Susan Weber? That's right, son. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. If you want, you can take your money back. Keep it. I'm sure it'll come in handy. You shouldn't take those candies. They've been there for years. I'll take my chances. I've put worse in my stomach. I'll keep it with me. There's no way I'm eating it, since I'd like to avoid getting dysentery. Son, what else can I do for you? I have a question for you. Tell me. It doesn't make any sense. Nothing important. Oh, what? I don't have anything else to ask you. Well, if you need me, I'm here. There are photographs of black musicians hanging everywhere, probably. There are some candies in this bowl. There are photographs of black musicians hanging everywhere, probably jazz players. The door to the porter's lodge. I'm here. No need to knock. One of the many walk-up doors that characterize Harlem. One of the many walk-up doors that characterize That should be Susan's hotel room window, but before doing anything, I should be sure. Son? I have a question for Tell me.
Nothing important. Oh. I don't. Wait. It's my car. Besides my investigator's license, it's the only thing I have. My investigator's license. 20 bucks, a damn questionnaire, and anyone who wants to can stick their nose in your business. My cigarettes, and my lucky lighter, even though it has never brought me much luck. These are my lockpicking tools. These trinkets have come in handy more than once. Valuable information is often the best hidden one. It's the camera Greta loaned me. Mine broke months ago. About 15 bucks. No clue. At least none that make... The keys of the car, of the office, and of something else that I don't remember anymore. The candy that's better left in its aluminum wrapper. Last Heaven Hotel. A curious name for a hotel in Harlem. From the information that I got, this is where Harvey Weber's stepdaughter is. One of the many walk-up doors that characterize Harlem. The subway. At this hour of night, because of the faces that you see in it, it looks more like a state prison. door must lead into the theater. I definitely can't get there for... Hmm, that ladder could be useful. I can't go there. The gate is locked. I can't go there. There's a dumpster there. There's a dumpster there. There's a... There's a dumpster there. That should be Susan's hotel room window. But before doing anything, I should be sure. A mailbox. Too bad my old pen pal died of loneliness a few years ago. I'd have happily sent him something. The Second Life of Miss Gray, a film by Howard Paul, starring Vivian Late. Vivian Late, that's the same name that Harvey Weber gave me. From what he told me, his daughter greatly admires that actress. I'm not going to pick up. Son? I have a... Tell me. Is there a woman called Late among your guests? Late, yes, and she matches your description. White, young, and blonde. Is she the woman you're looking for? Yes. What room is she in? Room 313, third floor, end of the hallway. Thanks. I don't have anything else to ask you. Well, if you need me, I'm here. I don't hear anything. Room 311. Room 
312. I don't hear anything. I've finally gotten away from my clod of a stepfather. I couldn't take it anymore. He thought I should spend my entire life behind the counter of a butcher shop. I'm an actress. I was born to act in movies. Big productions. Isn't that right, Teddy Bear? Of course, baby. I'll make you the biggest star in Hollywood. Yes, Howard. With you, I'll be the next Vivian Lake. Actually, you'll make me even more famous than her. You'll give me her parts and I'll exceed her. I'll be the number one. <laughs> right, Teddy Bear? Right? And here's our Susan. I'll take a few pictures of her with her teddy bear. And tomorrow morning, I'll give them to Harvey Weber. This way, I'll get the rest of my money. Room 313. It's Susan Weber's room. No clue. At least... No clue. At least none that makes any sense. It's today's newspaper. There are photographs of black musicians hanging everywhere, probably jazz players. There are photographs of black musicians hanging everywhere, probably jazz players. Susan Weber's room number is 313. I don't see why I should go to the next floor. I've heard enough. Harvey Weber paid me to get him some proof of his stepdaughter's love affair. All I have to do now is to get a picture of Susan while she's in the arms of her teddy bear, Howard. The apartment should have a window. gate, the cheapest. It's closed. I don't see why I should. No, it doesn't make any sense. It's closed. A gate, the ch That should be Susan's hotel room window. But before doing anything, I should be sure. From here, I can't see much of what's going on in there. No clue. I'm afraid it would be too easy this way. It's closed. I don't see how I could use them together. No clue. At least, it's closed. I don't see why I... It's closed. There's a dumpster there. I can't go there. The gate is locked. I can't go there.
sitting down. Son, what else can I do for you? I don't have anything else to ask you. Well, if you need me, I'm here. Looks like not even the shiny world of showbiz. It's closed, and surely not for a holiday. I don't see how I could use that. No clue. It... I don't see how. I don't see how I could. No, it doesn't make any sense. I don't see how I could use them together. There's a The theater's service entrance. This is probably where they load and unload the materials for the performances. No, it doesn't. I don't see how I... No. I don't see how... I'm afraid it would be too... That ladder could be useful. I can't go there. The gate is locked. That should be Susan's hotel room. From here, I can't see much of what's going on in there. I don't see why... I don't see why. I have better things to do than just a pile of Sitting down and reading the newspaper. I should have been a rec A wastebasket full of every kind of junk that can be. I'd rather not. Susan Weber's room number is.
It overlooks 125th Street. It overlooks... Closed is just fine. Boxes without anything... I'm not going to pick up every object that I... Room 313. I've heard enough. Harvey Weber paid me to get him some proof of his stepdaughter's love affair. All I have to do now is to get a picture of Susan while she's in the arms of her teddy bear, Howard. The apartment should have a window.